Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we, we are working on chapter 3 the uh, exercises for group B that were assigned um, in the digital study guide and we are working on problem uh, 3-37 for this video. Now um, this exercise as I looked at it it says here the adjusted trial balance so it's an adjusted trial balance for five-star catering present is presented next and says prepare the income statement statement of retained earnings um, for five-star catering for the month ended October 31st and also prepare the balance sheet for October 31st All right so you're we're being asked to from the adjusted trial balance to prepare our income statement statement of retained earnings and our balance sheet now to be honest with you um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, okay? Um, you know, it's 15 to 20 minutes to be able to do this. I am going to work through it, but I'm not going to spend a lot of explanation. If you go back, you know, this is something that we did for problem. Notice I'm showing chapter 2, uh, problem 2-41B, okay? 2-41B um, did the exact same thing. It had given trial balance information and ask you to prepare the three financial statements and in chapter two I spent a, a lot of time explaining the my thought process um, on how to create financial statements so I'm not going to spend you know be explaining that again here okay um, so I'm just going to get into it um, work through this uh, problem so that you can see the answer being created um, and if you don't understand something, go back and watch the 30 videos for Chapter 2. Watch that you know, problem uh, 2-41B. Come back and, and work on this exercise. And if you still don't understand something, then contact an instructor. Okay? So, um, and of course, you do have these solutions in the, uh, in the solution manual. So, while you're looking at that, um, you can watch me do it and remember um, formatting is important so it needs to look like what you're seeing in the uh, the solution manual whereas because I'm doing this you know ad hoc with a digital tablet uh, you know I'm going to take liberties by not writing everything out capitalization you know that type of stuff um, I'm going to abbreviate where you shouldn't um, so this is just for my own use just so that I mentally know what I'm doing but if I was creating them for a you know a third party, um, I would actually make sure that they look like they do in the solution manual. So um, first things first, we create the income statement first. So it's five star uh, Inc, five star catering Inc, and this is an income statement. And we have to have the heading date, which is correct. Um, it's for a period of time, so it's for the month ending and then uh, October 31st 2014 okay so I put revenues and expenses as my uh, headings as my categories and I only have one revenue account so it's service revenue and dollar sign because it's the first number in the column so that's 20,400 and then I list all the expenses so I have salaries expense rent expense and you know what um, let me erase this just real quick um, oops, revenues So I have service, revenue, indentation, okay? And then I have my expenses here. So I have salaries, expense, and I would write out the word expense, rent expense, depreciation, expense, equipment, supplies expense and then total expense okay and in this case here 
we have a profit right so let uh, again now watch what I'm doing I'm going to the order that I'm doing things. I created the heading first, then I wrote in revenues and expenses, and then I completed my revenue section by writing in the account and the amount. Then I put all of these, I listed all of these descriptions. So next I'm putting in the amounts. Um, since I'm going to add these all up, I have a dollar sign, it's a new column, right? And that's 1200, and that's 675. And that's 450. And to be honest with you, if you can do this, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. I mean, if you saw the, uh, you know, um, uh, if you worked through this and you compared it to the answers and the, the solution and you came up with the same thing, I wouldn't even be, you know, stop watching this video. Don't waste your time because you know how to do it. But if you didn't uh, get it correctly and you can't figure out, you know, if you can figure out why yours was different from what the answers are, then again, I still wouldn't be watching this video, so kind of like stop. But if you don't uh, get it, then yeah, obviously finish watching this video. And since this is a mathematical calculation, we put the numbers in, in the left-hand column and we put the solution in the right. And underline to show the mathematical calculation. To, uh, since that's the 7,075 is our total expense, we're going to do the mathematical calculation of 20,400 less 7,075, which gives me 13,325. And since that's the end of the calculation, double underline, put a dollar sign. And since revenues are greater than expenses, that's a profit. So now I write in net income because I'm showing it as a profit. So that's the income statement. And this 13,325 is going to end up on our statement of retained earnings. So we make the heading again, five-star catering. The name is retained earnings. And again, it's the heading date is month ending uh, October, not December. Uh, October 31st 2014 now that's the heading center aligned and now for the description remember the process is beginning retained earnings and the date which is October uh, 1st 2014 and I'd write this all out I wouldn't write 10 1 2014 I'd write out October I read out the word October okay and then we're going to add colon net income because we had a profit from our income statement and that would give us a subtotal and then less dividends because we do have dividends that are being paid out and that gives us an ending retained earnings as of October 31st 2014 so putting in the numbers first number is a dollar sign 15925 our net income was 13325 underline 29250 our dividends were 2500 and underline because of the mathematical calculation and we end up with ending retained earnings of 26,750 so that gets a double underline because it's the end of a mathematical calculation and a dollar sign because it's on uh, a dollar amount not a decimal and of course this 26,750 is going to be used on our balance sheet here so we have the heading balance sheet and for the balance sheet, right, remember it is, you know, um, I like to write the words as of October 31, 2014. It's acceptable to just write the date October 31st, 2014, but I also like to write, you know, as of because that connotates that you know these are the balances as of that date um, if you just write the date you know and you 
you know, somebody who's new might not realize that these are the balances on that specific date. But as of, it kind of like triggers in your mind that it is. So then the next thing I do is I write the, my categories, assets, liabilities, and then down here, um, I'm just going to write equity, okay, but you would write stockholders equity, okay. And so now I'm going to start listing the accounts. I do the assets first, so it's cash, uh, accounts receivable, supplies, equipment and for the equipment I have less accumulated depreciation okay now we're going to deal with the amounts right now realize that um, we're going to have a you know we're going to need two columns here okay the reason why we need two columns is because we want to have a total asset amount, right? And the total asset amount is cash, receivable, supplies, and equipment. But the equipment is, you know, is a book value, okay? It's the amount we bought it for less the accumulated depreciation, right? So we have to do that mathematical calculation for the equipment less accumulated depreciation in order to get that book value. So our cash will go in this in our right hand column, all right, as 9100. Okay, and again the dollar sign for the first number. The receivable is 3800. Then we have 600 for supplies. But now, you know, we have to deal with our equipment and our accumulate depreciation. We don't just put the 32,000 here and the 8,400 here, okay? That's wrong, right? Because we're not, uh, that doesn't tell us how much our equipment is, right? We have to do the mathematical calculation, so we bump over one column and we put the dollar sign, so that's 32,000. And then let's accumulate depreciation of 8,400. Now again, um, and I draw an underline in order to show there's a mathematical calculation. Uh, and again, the author put in brackets here, and I don't agree with the brackets because of the word less. All right, the word less tells us that we have a negative 8,400, and we also try to use positive numbers as much as we possibly can, and that's why we have the description that says less. Okay, so. Um, we, when it, it when we were uh, in the income statement, when we added up all of the uh, expenses, notice I I would do this and say, okay, we put the number in the right hand column here, you know, whatever the, the summation of that is. We are not going to do that here on our balance sheet because why? We have no description here. Okay. Each and every, you don't just have a number on a lot, uh, you know, a number on a line without a description. All of the numbers have a description. So when it comes to doing the math here on the balance sheet, when we take the 32,000 less the 8,400, we put that amount, this $23,600, on the same line item as the less accumulated depreciation, right? Um, instead of going like this, we're basically taking this and we're just going like that, okay? We put it on the same line as the less accumulated depreciation. And of course, we draw an underline to show that that's the end, you know, that we're going to use that as the last number in our mathematical calculation in order to get our 37,100 for our total assets, okay? And that gets double underlined, right? So you don't ever you don't ever just have a number on a line without a description, and that's why we write the 236 next to this 8400 because we're doing the mathematical calculation and we know that the total amount for that it, you know it has to deal with this equipment. Okay, All right. So now stick in our liabilities of 2100. Oops, I'm sorry. I have to write in the descriptions here first. Um, accounts payable, 
salaries payable, unearned service revenue, and that'll give us a total liabilities, and I'm abbreviating there. So I have 2100, uh, 1350, 1900, and that gets a mathematical calculation, get the total liabilities of 5350. Okay. Now, and I, you know, I, although it is technically correct, when I'm working in this here equity section, because of the, remember, I'm going to use two columns here instead of one, because I want to add my total liabilities to my total stockholders equity to get uh, a balance there. Well, I need, you know, in order to get this here equity amount, I have to do the math of numbers over here to get that amount, right? So that I can just look and go down all 53.5, I mean, 5,350 plus whatever amount this is. So I'm going to use two columns and not one. It makes it less confusing. So for my equity, I have common stock and retained earnings. And then it, so that means I have a total uh, retained earnings. So my common stock here is 5,000. And I had um, uh, 26,750, sorry. Uh, 26,750 and I draw an underline and so now that amount because I have a description here a total retained earnings right um, I can put that total amount over here as 31,750 So this 31,750, I know that's my total retained earnings. I have a description that matches it. And of course, I have an underline. And this is what I was referring to. I'm taking my liabilities plus my retained earnings to get my total liabilities. Plus retained earnings. I'm not retained earnings. Uh, I don't know why I'm using retained earnings there. I'm concentrating on something else. This is total uh, stockholders equity. Sorry. Sorry about that. So this is total stockholders equity. Do this the right way. Plus stockholders equity. And that amount is... 37,100 and that gets a double underline and of course the dollar sign because it's the you know uh, a dollar amount instead of a decimal amount and so that's what um, your your balance sheet looks like you know for uh, for this problem and again you know I'm you know, as you can see I'm taking a lot of liberties but I'm you know in um, you know the way things are being presented by taking, you know, abbreviating and so on and so forth. But you don't do that when you're creating your actual financial statements. For sitting at home doing the homework problem, sure, I'm doing it like this because it's going to save me a lot of time. But I know that if I was, um, if I was going to present this to somebody, I type it up so that it would look like it's supposed to um, in the solutions, um, and that's what I would actually present. So I'd have the capitalizations. Uh, indentations correct things like that but for right here as I'm working through this because I've done this and created these financial statements so many times you know I I know you know uh, oh well here's an indentation here's this here's that and therefore I don't have to be you know exact if you want it exact go ahead and create a like the solution okay All right so that's it for this problem and I will see you in the next video for the next problem